Okay, brothers and sisters out there, I want to discuss, is pre-trib wrong? Is the pre-tribulation rapture wrong? Because many people are not educated in the Word of God, so they're getting confused because they're ignorant concerning Scripture on this topic. Because there was this woman by the name of uh, Cory Ten Boom who went around saying that we need to get prepared for the tribulation. And she believes that we've been in the tribulation since the 1970s. So this woman was totally ignorant of Scripture. Because my Bible clearly tells me that the tribulation period is going to last for a full period of seven years. You can find that in Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 where it says about the Antichrist when he signed that seven year peace treaty. It says clearly he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. Now the word week there in the Hebrew is Shabua which means a period of seven years. Okay? And even with the two witnesses, when the two witnesses come on the scene, it says that they're there for 1260 days. And then if you go to Revelation chapter 12, so the first half, 1260 days, which is 42 months, three and a half years. And then after, if you go to Revelation chapter 12, it says clear that the Jews are being protected in the wilderness for a time, time, and time, and time, and half a time which is another three and a half years, which equals seven years. So anyways, <clears throat> I'm going to play a video at the end of this to show that there was another guy because they're trying to, you know, that's what people have to understand, okay? Just because you're going through a hard time in your life, you've been butchered, you've been tortured or whatever, so all of a sudden because that stuff has happened to you, so now you change your belief, ah, oh, because I was tortured, and I went through this, and I went through that. So now, yeah, I believe we're going to go through the tribulation. Well, let me tell you something, my friend. What, what has happened to you, if you've been tortured or whatever, it does not change God's doctrine. It does not change. Your beliefs may change, but God's word does not change. God's original plan is still as it was. A disbelief in God's plan or an unbelief in God does not change God's eternal truth. What God has written will be fulfilled exactly as he said. So, let us get into this right now, okay? Is pre-trib wrong? Okay. This is a question that somebody asked, okay? Please, could you tell me why a great woman of faith, which is talking about Corrie Ten Boom, which she came out of, uh, what's it called? the concentration camps under uh, Hitler. Please, could you tell me why a great woman of faith warned people all over the world about Christians not being raptured? As there is no... Okay. Okay, let me start over. Please, could you tell me why a great woman of faith warned people all over the world about Christians not being raptured as there is so much persecution already, please watch her testimony. Curry said the Lord sent her to warn us before we got to commonplace. I want so much to go with the Lord pre-trib and I am so unsettled now. They say FEMA camps are going to open up all over. What's your take on this? Okay. Post-trib believers often make the argument that belief in a pre-trib rapture promotes an escape, an escape, merely that will leave believers unprepared when the pre-trib portion is proven false. No matter how well known the person is, who uses it, this argument has no mirror because the church has been persecuted in various parts of the world since the beginning. And God has always given believers the strength to endure. In fact, the church has experienced some of its most 
rapid growth during times of persecution. Also, the Lord only promised to deliver the church from the end time judgments, not from persecution in general. Exactly. That's what many of these post-tribbers and mid-tribbers don't understand. We're not talking about escaping tribulation. We're talking about escaping God's wrath. And the tribulation period is God's wrath. Many of them don't even believe that either. But scripture is clear. Scripture clearly bears that out. That the whole entire period of the tribulation is God's wrath. So not, okay, let me, church from the end time judgment. Not from persecution in general. In John chapter 16 verse 33. He said, in this world you will have trials. But take heart because I have overcome the world. The pause, take heart means be encouraged the strength to endure trials come from the Lord these arguments are meant to play on our fears and they are apparently working with you but God did not give us a spirit of fear but of power of love and of self discipline 2 Timothy 1 7 if we are called to endorse persecution before the rapture we won't preserve it in our own strength, but in the strength of the Lord. And the simple fact is that the Bible only teaches one rapture portion, and that is the pre-trib portion. Every other portion on the timing of the rapture requires a <clears throat> significant departure from the rules of interpretation that tells us to always consider the context of passage when interpreting it. To include yourself against this kind of attack don't take anyone's word for what the Bible says instead search the scriptures for yourself to confirm rather what they are saying is true Acts chapter 17 verse 11 so I want to get into this but let's go see what it says in Acts chapter 17 verse 11 it says these were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all regardless and search the scriptures daily to find out rather the things were so so anyways first of all you see that with post with with uh, what post trippers do what they try to say is, listen to that, right here. Post-tribber believers often make the argument that belief in the pre-trib rapture promotes an escape. Primarily, that will leave believers unprepared when the pre-trib portion is proven false. Really. Nothing is proven false, my friend. God said it. That's what it is. So basically, these people are calling God a liar. Okay? These people are basically calling God a liar because the Bible clearly teaches a pre-tribulation rapture and many of these people don't even know that much at all. They don't even know that they're so ignorant concerning scripture. Okay? And many of these people that believe in post-trip basically what they believe in is uh, they believe in good works to be saved. I'm not joking around. They literally believe in good works to be saved. I heard it over and over and over again. They say that Jesus' death on the cross was not enough. So, the very reason for the tribulation is the purge. We need to be purified. We need to purge ourselves. Really. Well, let's go find out about that. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 1 and see what it says there. So, these people are saying that the blood of Jesus Christ is not enough. So, they need tribulation and suffering and this to make themselves pure to be accepted in the eyes of God. Yet, that's the teaching of Catholicism, that's the teaching of Mormonism, that's not the teaching of the Holy Bible. But let's see what it says in Hebrews, and let's see who purged the sins away, okay? God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, who he has appointed heirs of all things through whom also he made the world 
who being the brightness of his glory and the expressed image of his person and upholding all things the word of his power and when he had by himself purged look at that and what when he had by oh by himself huh really he did it by himself you see that Jesus did it all Jesus did it all when he had by himself purged our sin sat down at the right hand at the right hand of the majesty on high so that's a false teaching saying that you have to go through the tribulation to make yourself pure and blah 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 that's like an assault if you ask me that is literally an assault to the death of Christ on the cross and second problem second thing that these people believe in is uh, they believe in uh, replacement theology they believe that God is through with the Jews so now they have become the new Israel which is an anti-semitic teaching that's why there's a big difference between the church and Israel the Bible is very clear on that subject and yet they're trying to throw the church into the tribulation which has no purpose whatsoever because the very purpose for the tribulation is God pouring out his wrath upon sinful humanity and yet God already took care of that at the cross you see he already took care of that at the cross it's not, there's, not, there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ like it says right here Romans chapter 8 there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus yet the Bible is very clear what's the time of the tribulation it's the time of wrath and plus this too where was I going to yeah Romans chapter 11 let me read this to you okay Romans chapter 11 verse 20 25 for I do not desire brethren that you should be ignorant like many of these post tribbers are ignorant they don't understand scripture they're just taking any verse and they're trying to implement it to them when it has nothing to do with them that's why scripture clearly says in 2nd Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 study to make yourself approval unto God a workman that need not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth and these people are not rightly dividing the word of truth whatsoever that's why they are ignorant of scripture <clears throat> for I do not desire brethren that you should be ignorant of this mystery lest you should be wise in that you should be wise in your own opinion that blindness in part has happened to Israel you see blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in and so all Israel will be saved as it is written huh are we reading that correctly like how can people not read that and get it <clears throat> seriously Israel's on temporary blindness and it tells us clearly until when until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in what is that talking about well think about it in the Gospels it says clear that Jesus told the Jews that these things have been hidden from you okay these things have been hidden from you and because they rejected him as Messiah even when Paul was here Paul went to preach to the Jews because they continued rebelling 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 not believing so what happened Paul said you stiff necks I'm going to preach to the Gentiles so God has left Israel aside for now he has not rejected them he is their time is on he just postponed it they're just postponed the time frame because the first the first 69 weeks have already passed but when Jesus came into Jerusalem riding on the back of a donkey the time stopped ticking okay it's like put on pause for now but when that last Gentile believer is saved the rapture of the church is going to take place <clears throat> and, and then God's gonna focus his attention back on the nation of Israel and God has never ever 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 
worked with two groups of people at the exact same time. That's why, like all through the, the Old Testament, God was working with Israel, 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 raising up prophets, etc. And yet, all through the Old Testament, where it's talking about the tribulation period, the time of Jacob's trouble, the time that God's going to pour out his wrath, not one passage whatsoever mentions the church once. Because when he made those promises, who did he make those promises to? He made them clearly to the Jews. You see, the church was hidden. It was a mystery. They didn't know about this body of Christ coming together as one. Jew and Gentile coming in together as one. So once the last Gentile is saved, then, and only then, will the 70th week of Daniel start. The night the Antichrist signs a seven-year peace treaty with the nation of Israel, that's the countdown, the 70th week of Daniel. Like it said, And so all Israel will be saved, as it is written, The Deliverer will come out of Zion, talking about the second coming of Christ, and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob, for this is my covenant with them, when I take away their sin. You see? God is not done with them. Like what Paul said right here. I say then, has God cast away his people? Certainly not. For I also am an Israelite, the seed of Abraham. So, God has not worked with two groups of people. Because they rejected him. He's left them aside for now. And God has roughly been focused on the body of Christ for 2,000 years. And I believe that we're getting very close to that time when that last Gentile believer comes into the body of Christ and the church is complete, then the rapture will take place and then God will focus his attention back on the nation of Israel. And if you notice, it's all going back to terms. He's using uh, Jewish terms, like about the time frame. It's all referring to Jews. Like in the Old Testament, it's all for Israel. And yet you go to Revelation chapter 1, 2, and 3. It talks about the church. And then after, boom, it goes silent. No more church mentioned. Because she's not there. And everything's going back to Israel. Israel, 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 Israel. They have a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. They have uh, the two prophets that will be there, which are, which are new witnesses. Because look at this. Go to Acts chapter 1, okay? Go to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 1. Let us go there right now, okay? Look what it says in Acts chapter 1 here. And if you notice this part, you see? Like with Matthew chapter 24, Jesus is telling them what the future of Israel is going to be like. That's why he said, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee. He's talking to Jews. There was no Christians at this time. These were Jewish followers of the Jewish Messiah. So he's saying clearly, let those that are in Judea flee. Pray that your flight is not on the Sabbath or on the winter. We wouldn't care if it was on the Sabbath or not. Why? Because we don't keep the Sabbath. We don't follow rules. We are saved by grace and grace alone. And yet, go to uh, Exodus. That's a clear sign that God made to the nation of Israel. It has nothing to do with Christians whatsoever. Exodus chapter 17 Verse, I think it's verse 31. Exodus 17 verse... No, it's not 31. Maybe 1631. Let me see. And the house of Israel called its name Mema. And it was like... Maybe it's 31, 17. Or 1731. 
um, to wait. It's somewhere in Exodus, where it says, He's made an everlasting covenant with the, the house of Israel, an everlasting sign, which is the, the Sabbath. Let me see. And the house of Israel called its name Manna. And it was like the white considering seed test. Okay, it's not there. Sixteen thirty one. Maybe it's thirty one seven. So let me go check. So <coughs> And the Exodus thirty one seventeen maybe. Yeah, sorry, I made a mistake. It's Exodus chapter thirty one verse seventeen, right here. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refrained. How do I know this is talking about the Sabbath? Start from verse 16. Therefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath. To obtain the Sabbath throughout their generations as a perpetual covenant, it is a sign between me and the children of Israel. So that's why Jesus was saying in Matthew chapter 24, pray that your flight is not on the winter or on the Sabbath. Now for us, we don't care. We could care less if it's on the Sabbath or not. Because we don't keep the Sabbath. And plus, <clears throat> the Jews did not even look to uh, Gentiles. We were considered dirty people to them. Because look, <clears throat> go to, um, where am I going now? 15, Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Look at this. Jesus says clearly, Matthew 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. To Israel. No one else. And then if you go to uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 5, it says, These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them saying do not go into the way of the Gentiles and do not enter a city of the Samaritan but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel you see Matthew is talking to the Jews Matthew is not written for us and Matthew is not to us it's for Israel Jesus was clearly telling them what the future of Israel is going to be that's why he's referring it to Jews there but this is my point. Because <clears throat> after all of that, you see, Matthew chapter 24 is talking clearly about the second coming. Because we are not commanded to look for signs. We are commanded to just be looking for Christ, to be looking for the blessed hope. The Jews require a sign. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 22. The Jews require a sign. We don't. That's why it says clear. For we walk by faith, not by sight. But yet, that's all talking about the second coming, Matthew 24. Because Jesus is responding to the Jews. There was no church. There was no Christian on the earth at this time. And yet, what, what, what did the Jews ask Jesus after all that? Before he left. Did they ask him anything? Oh, where's the church? Where's this? Where? No. They were literally expecting a kingdom. They did not know anything about a church. Like I said, it was hidden from them. It was a mystery. Because look, in Acts chapter 1, look what it says. You have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, 
when they had come together, look, listen to this. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Hmm. You see, they were always expecting the kingdom. And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses. You shall be my wit. Okay. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And in Acts chapter 2, the church is born. And that's all you see preaching. Peter preached his first sermon. 3,000 souls got saved. And then after, when Paul got converted, and what to say in that? Uh, what does it say in 1 Corinthians? Let me read that to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 52. It says clearly, Behold, I tell you a mystery. Huh. A mystery. You see? A mystery is clearly talking about something that has never been revealed ever before. This is a new revelation that is being revealed to Paul for the church. You see? God left Israel aside. God has a different plan for Israel, and he has another plan for the church. A different plan for the church. What's the plan for the church? The rapture. What's the plan for Israel? The tribulation. For the Jew to go through the tribulation and to come into salvation. And we are already saved. The two different aspects, two different programs. You see, God is working with them. He made specific promises to the church. And when all the promises are fulfilled for the church, and those promises that are going to be fulfilled is the rapture. And we're out of here. No more promises left for the church. No more. We're in heaven. We're there. And he's going to start working with the nation of Israel as he has done in Old Testament times. And right now, God's only working with one body. You realize that? God is working with one body right now. He's working primarily with the body of Christ. That's all. And yet, during the tribulation period, hmm, there's two bodies in there. There's actually two bodies that God is working with in the tribulation. That cannot be talking about us because we're one in the body of Christ. There's not many bodies of Christ. There's only one body of Christ. You come as a Christian, if you're a Jew or a Muslim or whatever, and you come to faith in Jesus Christ, you join the body of Christ. You come and join us. But yet, in the tribulation period, there's two. There's two people that God is working with. But primarily Israel. What are the two people that he's dealing with in, in, during the tribulation? There's two purposes for the tribulation. Like I said before, God has never worked with two groups of people at the same time. Never. So what am I saying that there's two bodies? Well, think about it. He's going to be working with Israel. And many Gentiles are going to get saved. Many people after the rapture are going to get saved. That's what I'm talking about. <clears throat> it's, to it's totally different. He's working by judging Israel and judging the Gentiles. Because if you go to Jeremiah, go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30, it's clear that this time period that is coming is called the time of Jacob's trouble. Look at Jeremiah, chapter 30, verse 7. Alice, for that day is great, so that none is like it, and is the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. So the time of Jacob's trouble, which is Israel, because Jacob's name was changed to Israel in 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 34. And then if you go down to verse 11, what does it say? I am with you, says the Lord, to save you. Look at this. Though I make a full end of all nations where I have scattered you. 
Yet I will not make a complete end of you. God's going to make a complete end of all the nations. That's how bad this tribulation period is going to be. So it says clear that Jesus commanded his disciples right then and right there <clears throat> to uh, to go into all the world and preach the gospel. That has been clearly passed on to the church. And then yet, go to um, look at Acts chapter 15. Look what it says here. But I'll start from verse 14. Acts chapter 15, verse 14. Simon has declared how God at the first visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And with this, the words of the prophets agree just as it is written. After this, after what? So people have to understand what they're reading. After what? After God has finished saving all the Gentiles. Once the full completion is in. What's going to happen? After this. Look, you have to read it in context. What's it talking about? Si verse 14. Simon has declared how God at the first visit the Gentiles, which is un-Jewish people. Remember, because the Jews rejected him. So God has called Paul to preach to the Gentiles. The Apostle Paul is our Apostle, okay? He was the preacher to the Gentiles. So what to say? Simon has declared how God at the fir first visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And with this, the words of the prophets agree, just as it is written. But what's going to happen after all that? Look, read it. After this, after what? After God has saved Gentiles, what's going to happen? Of the church dispensation. After this, I will return. Huh. I will return where? Where will you return, Lord? Look what it says. After this, I will return and rebuild the tabernacle of David. Oh, God's going back to the nation of Israel. He's going to start focusing back his attention on the nation of Israel. Like these post trippers that try to say God is through with the nation of Israel. No, he's not. And I will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its runs, and I will set it up, so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord, even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who does all these things. You see? Like, there's, there's just so many things. So right there, it says clear. After this, he's going to focus back on the nation of Israel. Now, we saw in Acts chapter 1 that Jesus commanded the church. And yet, go to Revelation. It talks about the church, the church, the church, the church, like 20 times. And then after chapter 3, boom, the church drops out. But yet, flip the page. Remember what it said, it's clear. Okay. For you guys to understand that, let me go there. We already saw that it's the time of Jacob's trouble. But what the angel Gabriel said to Daniel. Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. This is what it says. Seventy weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. Daniel was a Jew. It says clearly. It is determined for your people, which is Israel, and for your holy city, which is Jerusalem. The church was not even... It was a mystery. That all the promises that God gave to Israel, the church didn't even exist yet. And yet people are trying to steal those promises. And said, oh, that's talking about us too. No, it's not. You weren't even born. The church wasn't even existent. He's clearly talking, referring to Israel. And God, like I said before, God has only worked with one group of people at a time. But during the tribulation, there's two purposes for the tribulation. To destroy all the nations where the Jews have been scattered. And to bring the Jews to himself. And many people are going to get saved. Many people, the Jews are going to get saved. And many tribulation saints will get saved. 
by the preaching of the 144,000, which are the Jews, because that is what their, primar their primarily uh, plan was. God wanted to use the Jews to be a light to the Gentiles, but because they rejected Jesus as, as Messiah, now God's using the opposite. He's using the Gentiles to be a light to the whole world. But during the tribulation period, God's going to use the Jews to be a light to the Gentiles. 144,000, two witnesses, etc. Why in the world do you need 144,000? Why in the world do you need two witnesses? If we are the witnesses. You see, they're new witnesses. They're new. Why are they here? Because we're not here. We are not here. Look at Revelation chapter 7. It says clear. After these things I saw... To wait, where was it? <clears throat> yeah. After these things I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the tree, on the sea, or on any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was granted to harm the earth and sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. Boom! And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. Why doesn't it mention the church? What about the thousands and millions of church members? Why weren't they sealed? Because they're not here. Everything's going back to Jewish. Jewish. You have 144,000. Revelation chapter 11, you have two witnesses. Revelation chapter 14, you have an, you have an angel proclaiming the gospel. Revelation 14 verse 6. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. And this is exactly what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a testimony to all nations. Then the end will come. This is what they're preaching. They're not preaching the gospel that we preach today. They're preaching the king is coming. The king is coming. Jesus Christ is coming back to set up his kingdom on earth. And everything's going back to Jews. And look at this. Saying the 144,000 are the first people that get saved. And if you notice that, it wouldn't say that unless, because it say they, they would have been added unto the church. But it says clear that they are first fruits. First fruits of what? They're first fruits of the new harvest. There would be no new harvest because there's still a harvest, which would which would be the church. But because the church won't be here, they will not be added to the church. It will just be a new harvest of souls. Because look at this. Revelation chapter 14, where it says, Then I looked, and behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, like the voice of many waters, and like the voice of loud thunders and I heard the sound of harps playing their harps they sang as it were a new song before the throne before the four living creatures and the elders and no one could learn that song except the hundred and forty four thousand who were redeemed from the earth look at this these are the ones who were not defiled with women for they are virgins these are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever he goes, these were redeemed from among men. Look at this being first fruits to God, first fruits to God. First ones that got saved. First fruits to God and the Lamb. So it's a brand new harvest that is coming in. No mention of the church. Total silence. If we knew that the church would be raptured before, then we would expect to see nothing whatsoever in the book of Revelation referring to the church and that's exactly what we see so whenever God deals with, with a, a specific person he names them no mention of the church it's all going back to Old Testament times like in Daniel the saints the saints the saints all through the book of Revelation you see about the saints he persecuted the saints this 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 
no mention once whatsoever. Where are we? We are in heaven. <clears throat> because look at this. Where is it? First Thessalonians. This is what the Apostle Paul had to say. First Thessalonians chapter 1, from 9 to 10. This is what Paul said. For they themselves declared concerning us, what matter of entry we had to you, and how you turned to God from idols to what? To serve the living and true God, and to wait. You see that? We are to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. Now many people try to say, oh, that's the wrath of hell. Yeah, right. Since when do you have to wait for Jesus to come down from heaven to save you from hell? Never. The moment someone places their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, they are saved from hell. This is clearly talking about the wrath to come. We're to wait for a son from heaven who delivers us from it. It's talking about the wrath of the tribulation. And if you notice right there, <clears throat> we're not commanded to be looking for signs. We are just commanded to be waiting on Jesus. And isn't this significant? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 is talking about the rapture. Look at that. <clears> 1 <throat> Thessalonians chapter 4 verse what? 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then for we who are alive and remain shall be caught up. That's where the word rapture comes from. Shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And from that time on shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. And then look what happens after that. It's like it's, it's all set up in order. First comes the rapture. Then chapter 5 comes the day of the Lord. Which is the tribulation period. But listen to this clearly. Look at this. But concerning the times and seasons brethren. You see that? Brethren. Paul does not call unbelievers brethren. He's clearly talking to the church, brothers and sisters in the Lord. But concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you, talking to his brothers and sisters, you have no need that I should write to you. For you, talking again to the brethren, for you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord, this is the tribulation period, the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For, you see, it goes from you, and then he changes to when they. For when they say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, upon them. You notice, not us. Them comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. Because after the rapture, the Antichrist is going to sign that peace treaty, and then... They think, finally, world utopia, world peace is here. Bang! The tribulation is going to start. But go down to verse 9. What does it say? For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then 2 Thessalonians as well. There is a false teaching going around saying that we're already living in the day of the Lord. So they got troubled. They, they got concerned. Just the fact that they were troubled shows you that they had the mindset that they were not going through the tribulation. Okay? So Paul had to come back and construct them. But didn't I tell you all this stuff before? Don't you remember? Don't you remember what I told you? Because the, the, the Antichrist cannot come until something is taken out of the way. That's in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and I'll start from verse 5. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then, you see that? And then that lawlessness one will be revealed. So there's something that's holding him back. And that is the body of Christ. It's the Holy Spirit working through the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit will never be removed. He will just step out of the way. It's the body of Christ that will be removed. And then and only then can the man 
of sin be revealed. So scripture is very clear on this on this subject. There's no condemnation and plus in Revelation chapter four. We are crowned. Like read Revelation chapter one, two. We're talking about crowns. He that he that endures, he that overcomes shall be crowned with the crown of life, etc. As Paul said, I've kept the faith, I finished the race, now is laid up for me the crown of life which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, but not only to me, but also to all those who, what, that love his appearing. You look, at, look at Revelation chapter 4. And plus, if you go to Luke, if you go to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, because somebody was helping, I guess the person was blind or whatever, so because, you, because they cannot repay you, you will be repaid in the resurrection of the just. Now, that's, you'll be rewarded. Luke chapter 14, verse 14. Look what it says. <clears throat> and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you shall be repaid at the resurrection of the just. Revelation chapter 14. You pictured it with crowns. That cannot happen unless the resurrection of the just has taken place. This is the rapture of the church in Revelation chapter 4. <coughs> Look at chapter 4. Okay? Verse 4. Around the thrones were 24 thrones, and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. We are raptured before the Antichrist is unleashed. Because after in chapter 5 we are singing a song, chapter 5 verse 9 and they sang a new song saying you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals you see to open its seals we're telling Jesus that he alone is worthy to open the seals and to unleash them those are the seven seal judgments of God and they sang a new song saying you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth and then Revelation chapter 6 look now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals it's Jesus that's opening it very clear very 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 clear so clear that we are raptured way before Revelation chapter 7 is a different crowd of believers and they're holding palm branches this is a this is who it's talking about a different group of people because who are, who are these these are these who have come out of the great tribulation and by the way wrath is being poured out you notice that look what it says let me see where it says that and i said to him sir sir who said him, these are the ones who've come out of the what great tribulation so it's not the tribulation it's the great tribulation that these people have come out of and that's even more worse like the the trumpets and the vile judgments being poured out because look at revelation chapter 11 it says clear about the judgments coming the trumpets i mean so the seven seal judgments have already uh have already have already fallen and the trumpet judgments have fallen as well <clears throat> so right here it says then the temple of God was open in heaven and the ark of his covenant was seen in the temple and there were lightning noises thunderings and an earthquake and a great hail okay, wait, let me check something here <clears throat> saying we give you thanks we give you thanks O Lord God Almighty the one who is and who is who was and who is to come because you have taken your great power and reigned the nations were angry and you in your wrath has come in the time of the dead that they should be judged and that you should reward your servants the prophets and the saints and those who those who fear your name small and great and should destroy those who destroy the earth 
Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who sat before God on the thrones and on, fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Okay, we already saw that. I'm trying to find something here. Yeah, right here. Look at this. Thousands of people were killed, and then the rest were afraid and gave glory to God. Look at this. The second woe is past. Behold, the third woe is coming quickly. Woe. It's judgment. It's all through Scripture, man. It's all through Scripture. So clear, man. <clears throat> so, so, so clear. The judgment is being poured out from Revelation 6 to 19. Full seven years of judgment. Now, because I gotta get close, I gotta be closing here soon. But I want to go to the Old Testament now. Oh man, I hate this. Okay, hold on. Revelation. Okay. Now I gotta go to the Old Testament. The Scripture is very clear, brothers and sisters. Because many of these people, what about the martyrs? What about the martyrs? You think the pro, the you, you think you're more holier than the the apostles? Who do you think you are? Let me ask you a question. Who brought on the persecution? God or man? Hmm. Man did. God didn't. God never will do that. And who brings on the tribulation? We just saw. Jesus Christ. Jesus is not going to pour out his own wrath upon his own body. Like, there's just so many things. Like I said before, it's all for the nation of Israel. He's not going to pour out his wrath. Maybe they'll say, what about the martyrs? There's a big difference between persecution and wrath. The, the tribulation period is a time of judgment and wrath. And yet, look at this part. Look at the book of Amos chapter 5, okay? Look at Amos chapter 5. Verse 18. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. For what good is the day of the Lord to you? It will be darkness and not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion and a bear met him. Or as though he went into the house, leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. It is... Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light? It is not very dark with no brightness in it. This here would make no sense whatsoever. Why in the world would God be saying, Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord! For what good is it? The day of the Lord to you. It will be darkness and not light. Now, you see, God is telling them, that if they were to repent, God raised the prophets. If this is all talking to Israel here, okay, guys? This is talking to the nation of Israel. God is saying, why do you, you guys don't even have to go into the day of the Lord? If you just repent of your sin, you'll be saved. But why in the world would God be saying, woe to you who desire the day of the Lord? <laughs> He's telling you, it's not a good thing. You don't want to desire it. But we wouldn't have to desire it. Like many of these post-trib and mid-tribbers believe. Because, if you think about it, we're going to be here. So, the tribulation is actually coming to us. So, we don't have to desire it. It's just going to come automatically. Just like people. They don't have to desire death. Because you don't have to go out and kill yourself or whatever. Because, with time, your body is just going to shut down and you're just going to die. The same thing. Why in the world would God be saying, Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord, if the day of the Lord is going to come to you? It, it, it just doesn't make any sense. It literally does not make any sense, people. Because he's talking to the Jews. Like Jesus said in, uh, in, the, in the Gospel of Luke, Just at this time, if you were to have known the visitation, how I often desire to gather you as a hen gathers her chicks, because they did not repent. That's why Jesus wept, because of their sin. The destruction was coming to Jerusalem. And they, many Jews were killed, and the rest of them that survived were cast to the four corners of the earth. 
that was a result of their unbelief. If they would have repented and placed their faith and trust, that never would have happened. You see? Where there's sin, there's judgment. But because God took care of that at the cross for us, for those of us that have accepted the pardon, we are free. There's no reason for judgment to fall on us. Because we are forgiven. We are cleansed. We are made pure. We are holy through the blood of Jesus Christ. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys, brothers and sisters out there. And before I let you go, I want to read this. This is a, like this other lie. People are trying to say, oh, the pre-tribulation rapture was invented by John F. Darby in 1830. Yeah, right. You see, these post-tribbers, they literally lie in your face. They literally lie. They're trying their very best to change the truth of God into a lie, but they can't. Because I just showed you straight from Scripture. I got this all from my Bible. My Bible clearly teaches a pre-tribulation rapture. People that take other passages can literally teach false teaching because they're not rightly dividing the word of truth. They're taking passages that are referring to Israel and they're trying to implement them to the church, which have nothing to do with the church. But listen to this. I'm going to read this to you guys right here. Okay? <clears throat> this was found. This is a, this is a, a preaching that somebody did in AD 372. Yeah, this, this guy's name is a Assyrian, Assyrian letter dated AD 372. This is what it says. Why therefore do we not reject every care of earthly actions and prepare ourselves for the moment of the Lord Christ so that he may draw us from the confusion which overwhelms all of the world? For all of the saints and the elect of God are gathered prior to the tribulation that is to come. And we are taken to God lest they see the confusion that is to overwhelm the world because of our sin. This is an old Syrian note written in A.D. 372, well before John Darby or anyone else. Rock wow, links of other truths here came came up with these false teachings against the Ephraim rapture quote, the Harpazo It was written and spoken and told in detail in the first book ever written called the Book of Enoch. Also, please note that without the rapture happening, first God's word would be contradicting, and God says his word is not contradicting, and there would be no one to populate the new millennium, because in the end, the evildoers are dealt with remo and removed, not the Christians, and there will some that enter into the, mo into the kingdom in their fleshly bodies. The goats are cast to hell at the end of the tribulation, and then who would be left to populate the earth for the millennium? So therefore, comfort one another with these words and prepare your hearts for the Lord. Amen. That's exactly what we got to do, brothers and sisters. You see, if you're focusing on the tribulation, you're being worldly. You're being worldly. Oh, we need to do this, we need to do that. We need to get, like, doomsday preppers. That's totally against what my script, what my Bible tells me. It says, do not focus on earthly things. Be anxious for nothing. Huh. That would be a ridiculous statement to make. Be anxious for nothing. We're going to go through hell. We're going to go through this, this, this. You're telling me not to be anxious? Come on. So many things want to make sense. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. Believe me, you're going to have fear when God's wrath is being poured out. It says clear that man's hearts will be failing them. There's just so many things, brothers and sisters, you know? But anyways, I want you guys to listen to this teaching here about Cory Ten Boom. This woman was totally ignorant of Scripture. She went around saying that, trying to teach people that there's no rapture and you need to get ready for the tribulation. Which is this? This woman was totally ignorant concerning scripture. She didn't know what she was talking about. And there's this other guy, David Liu, that was a survivor from the Holocaust, and he's preaching on the pre-tribulation rapture because this guy knows how to read his Bible. So, anyways, brothers and sisters, thank you for watching. Before I close, though, I want you guys to listen to this video. And uh, this is all I got to say, brothers and sisters out there. Live ready, stay ready, and be ready for the coming of the Lord. Because Jesus Christ is coming back very, very soon. So I pray that you'll be ready for his coming. Let him find you ready when he comes. 
And all that are in Christ are going. If you're in Christ, you're going up in the rapture. There's no such thing as this practical rapture. Because so many people confuse Matthew chapter 25, the ten uh, wise and foolish virgins. That's not talking about the church. We are not virgins. We are brides. But see, those that were not ready, they were, they were left. They went into hell, right? They went to hell. If you're in Christ, you're going up. God does not divide up his body. And it says clear that they are virgins, and we are not virgins. We are brides. And that's clear parables talking about the kingdom of the 1,000 year reign millennial kingdom. That's not talking about the rapture. Since when did Jesus ever say, Depart from me to one of his own people? At the judgment seat of Christ. Never. That's clearly talking about virgins. Okay? About, it's talking about the millennial. It's parables talking about the millennial kingdom. So, brothers and sisters, I want you guys to listen to this. And this is all i got to say. And be ready for the coming of the Lord because Jesus Christ is coming back very, very soon. So, this is all i got to say. And God bless you. And here's the video. And God bless you all. God bless. So, here's the video, brothers and sisters. Here it is. All right. Pre-trib rapture moment number seven. What about Corey Tenbu? This is one of the ones that a lot of people will cite that are for the post-trip movement. They try to say that because Corey Tenboom went through the Nazi death camps, you know, that she was a real Christian martyr and she saw her sister die and everything else. And so because she believed in a post-trip rapture, she did not, she was very much against the pre-trip rapture. So a lot of people will point to her as one of the proofs, the great foundations of post-trib theology. Well, uh, how about we pit her against a Jew, an Orthodox Jew that was actually in, the, in the, the real death camps and actually was in one of the